I got five words all spaced up together. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious because sometimes they use them to clear the ground. Right. You know, sometimes they use them for me or yeah, I'm a good. They want to clear my neighbor's ground rather than mine. So that's why you get arrested. <laughs> Stealing grass. <laughs> Weeds. Making deposits on yeah, someone yeah, else's property. Yeah, get him for fertilizing his yard. You should be in charge for that. That's anyway. Yeah, you should. You should there should be some way that you could recover that. Mm -hmm. Have you got a, a strategy for trial? Mm -hmm. I know you, you've requested <laughs> yeah, a Yeah, insanity. <laughs> are, do you, are you going to defend yourself, of course? I'm going to go on. You're going to be your own defense. Oh, sure, you know, I you know, figured you would. You know, you know, you know, a man who uh -huh. defends himself, uh, as they have to fool for a lot of Yeah, and the same for our clients. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Yeah, I'm going to have a... When the red light's on, is that going to go? Yeah, you're on the internet right now. Turn there and smile. Hello, China. We own all over the world. China? We, Ronnie, if you're watching, we this is the show. We, we used to say <laughs> hello to Muammar Gaddafi until uh, Obama and uh, uh, Hillary killed him. <laughs> you think Hillary had a part in that? Well, they had a part in turning everybody loose on him, and then that's the bunch that burned our embassy down over there. You know, same bunch it, that we supported. Yes. And, uh, uh, I think it actually took them just a little bit too long to find him. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, thank you. What? They had to get him at the right time. You've got to have everything to work out. Well, right timing time. is everything, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Is that us? Well, we want to welcome everybody that's watching us on the World Wide Web. We're coming to you this, uh, what is this, uh, August Hello? the 30th? Yes, sir. 30th, 29th, 30th. Hello? August 30th. the 30th, right. Yes, sir. And uh, 2014, we're coming to you from uh, La Follette, Tennessee, U.S. of A. And uh, wherever you are, you're welcome to call in at 423-562-1450 or... 566 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450. 566-1450
BTPWLAF.com. That's right. Yeah. They got it all right. You know and you all that, didn't you? No, it is. But you, you know what? Damn, well, right. Bob, I believe that since we were not live a few minutes ago and you were giving the phone numbers, perhaps maybe you need to repeat the phone numbers. Phone numbers. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that. I heard a fella, he was a fireman here back many years ago, and he, uh, the mayor came by. Now, this is years ago. I ain't just not the. Uh, the present mayor, but anyhow, the mayor came by. He's a longtime mayor, and he come by the fire station and he asked the fireman something about what they was doing. He says, "My goodness," says, says we can't get nothing done for the phone ringing. And the mayor <laughs> told him, "Say, well, why don't you get an unlisted number then <laughs> for the fire department?" <laughs> that sounds like that long-term mayor we used to have. Yeah, that long one we had years ago. They used to have an unlisted number to. At the post office, and somebody we all know and love used to give out the number on the show every week. I bet they appreciate that. That's when they moved the, 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 uh, <laughs> they moved the post office up to Speedwell. That's the Speedwell post office up there. They called yeah. it the post office. They couldn't what was that there. post office number? Are you kicking me? I don't even remember. It's Misty now. Or something. It's Misty now. Is it now? So I just promptly forgot it was in the meeting. I only got one white page left in the phone book. Everybody's getting rid of them landlines. I don't want to get rid of my landline. You can't get AT&T to come out and fix it. Now you notice government is the last one that will learn that you save money by going away from landlines. The cell phone. Yeah, everybody ought to go with straight talk. Government <laughs> wants to go with the boat. You know, we complain a lot about the government here. And them, didn't somebody call in and want to know how come we were always complaining? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, then, then you tell well, you why. That's a complaint. You know, uh, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and back when I was a young man, and you too, even though you're young, right, much younger than me, right, every right. kid carried a knife. Everybody I knew carried a knife, and it was sharp. Absolutely. But if you pulled a knife or tried to pull a knife on somebody, you were really put down. You were a sissy, a coward, and everything else. Nobody ever pulled a knife on anybody. Sometimes we carried rifles to school, leave them in the... Uh, principal's office, or a lot of times, I got there so late, I just took my mind over in the classroom, the teachers did it up there against the blackboard, and uh, in the afternoon, I'd wander around through the woods and everything, squirrel hunting on the way home. Nobody ever thought that anybody was going to ever get shot, unless he dressed up like a squirrel or was perched on a limb. Uh, but, you know, uh, somebody, asked, love tail, me, wouldn't he? somebody asked me, says, uh, what happened between those days and today? Listen, somebody tell them who these people are here. One of them won't stay in the background, but yeah. who is this one right That's here? Great kid? On our show, this is uh, the great Shirley Kidd, uh, <laughs> married the wrong Jury kid. sister from <laughs> my sister from uh, Florida, and. Uh, She's one without the beard. And a distant really one without the beard. But, uh, <laughs> infamous that Billy the Kid. Yeah. She's well actually I'd say she's probably more closely related in temperament to Annie Oakley than oh, she yes. is. Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. She's uh, uh, heavily armed, always. Good. She really believes that women should uh, carry. I mean damn. <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman's woman, and uh, no man messes with her, especially the man she's married to, which is my first cousin, Florida. He keeps, oh, he, 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 he behaves himself around her. Oh yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I, the, uh, I guess the thing up in uh, Ferguson, Missouri has kind of cooled down a little bit, but I kind of made a comment here a while back that that guy that got shot up there, that I believe his name was Brown, 
Undoubtedly, he hadn't read the story about David and Goliath. Uh, if he had have, I believe he'd have rethought that situation. It well, could have turned out a lot like, different. Mm -hmm. Possibly, did you see the video where he pushed the guy out of the way when he? Oh told yeah, him to yeah. yeah that's, did you see that? Oh well, yeah, he, he, he was such him. a nice, gentle giant. But anyway, with uh, Shirley here, her sister Kathy, also from Lakeland, Florida, and. Uh, you still work for the government? You still work for the government? She does. So she's a bureaucrat. <laughs> we, can, we can really torture her and put her down. When you talk about being heavily armed, we had one of our congressional candidates on our program, and we were talking away, and my pistol fell out of my pocket and hit the floor. I reached over and picked it up. I said, as you can see, we take our politics real serious up here. Especially the Second Amendment. Uh, the Second Amendment. Yeah. Yes. I think it should be enforced. Well, you, do you realize, Shirley, that here in, uh, uh, in Cassidy, here in Tennessee, that we have no Second Amendment rights? I did not realize that. Why not? None. Why not? Well, first of all, you cannot carry a gun that has ammunition in it. So the Second Amendment, Amendment, Second Amendment oh, says okay. that the right, to bear arms, right, the right to bear arms shall be un, not, shall not be infringed, okay? Well, there's no greater infringement than to make take not have any bullets in your gun, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, second, when you get permission, when, when you buy a special permit, to carry a weapon with bullets in it, then the right to bear arms has ceased to be a right. It has become uh, a privilege that you're having to pay for because you have to pay for that uh, permit to carry a gun. So rather than having Second Amendment rights, the government lets you have uh, gun privileges if you pay for the privilege. Okay. but. Don't you think along with that that you need to be well well educated on how to handle a gun? Because right. not everyone no. that That's has not a what gun. The no, no, say. no, I'm not talking about that issue there. I'm talking about whether you can carry a gun with or without a permit or whatever. Shouldn't the well, people I that carry in a, a state, gun be educated? I lived in a state for 63 years. 60, 64 years, I believe. There was an open carry gun. What's well, changed we, we since never then? Had well, there's, there's still an open carry state. They don't have any problem. The Constitution has not changed. No, it has not. It, well, it should not. Well, They're now, trying to change it. Getting back to what I was talking about a while ago when I said, you know, I was describing how it was when I was a young man and uh, carrying the gun, and carrying the knives and knives. Back the dinosaur around there. And, and <laughs> what happened between <laughs> now and then? And, uh, you know, we probably get some repercussions of what I'm going to say, but I always do. And we know what happened. I said, the Civil Rights Movement. I said, what? I said, the Civil Rights Movement. I said, for a couple of hundred years almost, we had been the melting pot of the world. People from Italy and the Scandinavian countries and uh, even the Polacks were... Uh, I'm not meaning to offend any Polish Americans. Hey, we have a Polish press here. Came in and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and melted. <laughs> oh, and they melted. Zvetsky came over and became American. I said then in 1964, or prior to that, and I was part of the civil rights movement. I've discussed that before. I was at the county in Woolworths when they had to sit in with them. I marched with them there in about. Uh, <clears throat> 11, 12 years later, I helped clean out some storage warehouses where the Klan killed seven of the civil rights marchers, and every one of them had communist literature in their storage warehouse. So you can see what that the civil rights movement was subverted. They were not directed to become Americans and to melt. They were being paid by the federal government to stay poor and to stay ignorant and not to mail. They paid them. Paid them to have kids out of wedlock. The federal government just destroyed the black 
family. Are you saying that was back in the 60s? Uh, back in the 60s, you're saying no, that was going on? No, well, the 60s were well, mainly, it, uh, it really came into fruition under it, Lyndon Bain Johnson. It started before him, but Lyndon Johnson is the one that came out with the Great Society. All you had to do was uh, get pregnant uh, and apply for housing and apply for food stamps and apply for mm -hmm. medical care, mm -hmm. you know, and what in the world did they need some black husband around for? Because the federal government had to come their daddy. Well, they're still doing that. I know they're still doing that. I'm talking about when they started. So yes. somebody wanted to know what happened between my growing up and now, I said the Civil Rights Movement, because you had a group of people there that were I'm not talking about all of them, I'm talking about the majority of them that absolutely refused to melt in this great melting pot. They preferred to call themselves African Americans. Nobody goes around and calls themselves necessarily Italian Or Mexican, American. Mexican American. Or Mexican American. They're not really American. American. <laughs> now, there ain't nobody calling themselves uh, Nicaraguan Americans or Guatemala Americans. No, because they it's only Africans and Americans. They took Nicaraguan out of the dictionary. Hey, speaking, how did all the swearing in go yesterday? Anybody here? What? A little bit of swearing went on down the door now. <laughs> they took a lot, of, a lot of oaths yesterday. Yeah. The 8th Judicial District and DA's office did his entire show over in Union County. They had free food last night. Yeah, I, they did. I missed it too. This coffee that's free ain't worth but, going uh, out to <laughs> did, did our county uh, new mayor... Yeah, yeah I saw him down there on the courthouse steps wearing his luau. What, what, uh, what do you call them things? Some flowers? Uh, oh. Lays. Lay. I'm sorry, I said Lou Al, that's where you go celebrate and put them lays on. That's the party. <laughs> yeah, that's the party. That's where they roast the pig. That is where they roast the pig. <laughs> we missed the pig. Well, I have a question. We missed it. One of our county commissioners that has just been sworn in, I have a question. I thought he moved to Scott County. He built a house and has been living in Scott County. But he runs for county commission over here and gets sworn Mary Landrieu, is that Landrieu? Is that who we got here, Mary Landrieu? She we got Mary Landrieu. Yeah. <laughs> and who else? They found a couple more up there in Congress that, yeah, uh, yeah, that sold their homes in their home state and bought big condos and homes in Washington. They don't live at home, so they can't Bob, run. Well, Bob they established residence in the pilot, and they didn't want him to run for that. Said he was well, uh, Cliff Jennings and Dean Sexton conspired to prevent him from running, and he should have filed a suit against both of them for about a million dollars apiece. Is uh, it too late? We can use the money. Yeah, it's too late now. <laughs> statute of limitations has run out. The statute of limitations. And uh, so... Uh, can't file a suit now, but uh, yeah, that was a conspiracy between the Honorable Dean Sexton, who is also the mother of probably the worst criminal judge in the history of the state. I of didn't say that. I might be before. I did because your honor, <laughs> if, I have a great deal of respect for you. If Shane Sexton is a criminal judge, the woods are full of them. A cold blooded, premeditated murder, and the guy gets off to 45 days. Sentenced him to 100, suspended 55 days. He'd been in jail for 45 days, so gave him credit for time served, and the guy walked free. No probation or nothing. I wonder what the defense was. That would have been an interesting case to heard that. Did I they go to court? It, no, it didn't, didn't go, go to well, court. Well, it went to okay. court because it had to go to court. Well, it didn't rule on it. Didn't get a jury trial. But it didn't okay. go to jury. Well, you let some goat and Esperado gets down there. They're going to serve the bug in here. He'll, <laughs> he'll get maximum. Give my friend a little tie of pine to pay. I'm working to get you a maximum me. sentence. Yeah, I might probably get five to seven, you know. Little <laughs> <laughs> 29. No, Shane will go for 50 cents. Yeah, so. you go, guys. Well, they might not. Won't be no five of them. They'll be 50 They couldn't let me go 79 years of bad behavior. <laughs> they still use Spark. Oh, no, 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 oh yeah, no, no, no. our great esteemed uh, state representative, Denise Powers, yeah. was uh, uh, advocating that we go back to the electric chair in case we run out of chemicals. Yeah. You know, we have a chemistry set down there. We, we, uh, we put people to death with 
And uh, Denise proposed a bill that just in case we run out of chemicals, we can bring old Sparky yeah, back. Keep shape. I'm yeah, all ready. Keep shape. <laughs> I'm all ready for old Sparky. And Bob, get down there and throw yourself on a person in the court. Bobby, that won't even have to shave your head. That's right. We're about the guy that agrees, son. We're about the guy that calls his lawyers and says, hey, this is John. He says, yeah, John, what do you want? Well, he says, what do you mean, uh -huh. what I want? He says, I'm down here on death row. He says, I know it. He says, well, 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 he says, he said, okay. He said, what do I do? He said, don't sit down until I get there. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this death penalty thing, for some reason, it seems to me like that would be very simple. Uh, I think everybody has been put under uh, anesthesia. I know I've, I've been put under so many times I can't even count it. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I have never been able to see the, the person uh, uh, administering it, whenever they begin to push the syringe, Correct. I've never seen them take it out. And I have tried many a time. And if you're in the middle of a sentence or whatever, it's just like somebody turned your switch well, off. So and so you don't even have to go to sleep, you don't care. Well, if yeah, you the talk, lights out. <laughs> yeah, if you can talk to Michael Jackson, you know, we got a nurse yeah, right. over here. She knows all about it. There you go. There you but go. Yeah, we have an expert. That's it right. don't seem we to have me an like, expert on this chemistry. It don't seem to me like there should be so much controversy about it. As I was going to say, I'm Michael Jackson's uh, uh, yeah, doctor. private doctor. We but, could just put them sleep and cut their throat. They'd never know the difference. Well, they, they would not. That's right. Whenever you go to sleep, I, well, everybody's been in surgery knows what it is. You don't feel anything until you start coming out from under it. And that's, that's when you feel it. When you start feeling it. Yeah. What do they call that in the Middle Ages uh, when they time the four horses? Quarter. Draw and draw quarter. quarter. Drawing and quarter. We ought to go back to drawing and quarter. Especially politicians. Especially <laughs> politicians. Politicians should be drawn and quartered. Yes. yes. I like to, they had this thing back during the end position where they'd take this year cast iron helmet and put on these people mm -hmm. and they'd lock it down with a rat inside. Oh, oh. You know, a rat won't starve, and it'll find its way out. And mm. you know, a lot of times, you know, actually going through the layers of skin and skull could be quite painful, but the brain has no nerve ending, so he could munch around there for days before you ever, you yeah, might develop a twitch or something, yeah. but mm. before he come out your eyeball or something, you didn't actually bleed to death. That's truly barbaric. Well, yeah. That's Folks, and politicians. Dun 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 dun. Twilight Zone shall continue. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do right next. now. We're going to do something besides the Twilight Zone. We're going to do something right. here. Dirty Moon. Here we go. Let's that's see. Money. What is this? Commercial. Huh? We have to do a couple of commercials. Fallen Digger Wilson.
that's it. I just thought I'd tell you more, sir. Let me kill some of this noise here. Uh, look, I was wanting to say one thing, a little parody on uh, your commercial. Turn your TV off. Right. Look, 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 it was a little parable on your, your, t on your ad we just did. I'm going to say this, I've been around here for now on 50 years, 15 years, and frankly, I'm sick of it. What's wrong? <laughs> you know, what's wrong, Bob? <laughs> he, you know. What, what do you think of that, Digger? <laughs> he, he can't already hear you, Digger. <laughs> what are you sick of? What are you sick of, Bob? What? what are you oh, sick I'm of? just picking. You know I love it.
May Day was on May Day. Yeah, Sunday and Christmas Day. She was born on May Day. You were born on May Day. May 1. Sunday and Christmas Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the, uh, I heard a report yesterday, last night, and I haven't verified it or anything like that. And it has to do with uh, the Homeland Security is picking up a lot of chatter, so they say, if you can believe anything you hear out of Washington, coming out of Juarez, Mexico. And what's coming out, or what they're reporting is, that they're hearing a lot of stuff from ISIS. Down in Juarez. In just case you don't want to, you know, give any mention of Syria and your ISIS comments, you can call it ISIL, which that don't remind you about how screwed up we've done in Syria. Well, what we've done, we've changed the name of so many things, and I think it boils down to whatever name you use pretty well describes well, the organization. Those are militants, don't you know? They're not terrorists, they're militants. Well, well they're, they're agitators. agitators. Yeah. That, are we going to get in a, a, a combination of ISIS? Mexican invasion from the Juarez part of the U.S.-Mexican border? I don't know what we're going to get, but you know, if this is fact, they're not there for no reason. If the, everything goes, there's a reason. It means they're there for some reason. So they're there for some reason, and I bet it ain't just for the the seashore or whatever, because I don't believe there's the much of a shore. They got, you know, it's too crowded in Cancun well, for the winter war. Whenever, whenever you start giving them names, I think the name for uh, unaccompanied uh, children is guest. They're guest from the south of the border. So this may just be guest from the south of the border if they come over here. But I'm sure they didn't travel halfway around the world to end up at Juarez, which is very close to our border, right on our border. I've been to Juarez. <laughs> be interesting, and also on this thing. Boy, there was something in her eye. Well, I was coming like, from this side going that way. Going that way. There was something in her eye. This, I guarantee you. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you better want to eat a drink. <laughs> I <didn't either. laughs> I tried, I tried to go to Warhead and got picked up for the law before yeah, I got, got to the border. I don't know what I was doing. I was speaking to the Florida and killed them both. Well, it seems uh, in this same report. They thought I was smoking fruit in Florida. I don't know what they thought I was doing in Canada. The president was on a uh, fundraising mission. No, uh, he wouldn't go out raising no funds, would he? Well, I don't know. How does he find time to raise money when he's golfing all the time? Well, anyhow. He's looking for golf sponsors. <laughs> they said that he was going to fly back to Washington last night, and the only two reasons they could give was that there was something serious going on, or else the Queen didn't want him out in some motel, whatever, without her. Uh, whatever. And I don't killed. know whether uh, Valerie was accompanying him, of course. That's a whole story within itself. Yeah, his Iranian advisor. Valerie, Valerie that Jarrett. one that played in the uh, Harper's Valley PTA? <laughs> Valerie Jarrett. You haven't heard of Valerie oh, Jarrett? That Valerie. Uh, <laughs> well, now, his Iranian born advisor. Yeah. Uh, she's going to run for president next. Well, I, vote for I mean, we got a president well, now that will overthrow all the cases is about she, having to be born in America. Is she yeah, not if pretty? If she's going to go to hell, I'm going to do my part. <laughs> well, she she oh, may no, be pretty much the president right now, just not elected. Exactly. Because everywhere he goes, she she's accompanies there. him. Mm -hmm. And I've got a book, and one of the standout parts of this thing had to do, she was acquainted with Hussein Obama before the Queen was a, a, uh, acquainted with him. You're talking about before Michelle. Before Michelle, yeah. Before Michelle was acquainted with him, Valerie, according to this book, was very well acquainted with him. And that before Michelle, before Obama was allowed to uh, <clears throat> associate with Michelle, date or whatever, she had to be, it had to be clear or authorized by Valerie. Interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. I wish I'd had somebody to authorize my uh, association with some women. <laughs> well, uh, the, pres me a woman. the president, uh, 
if such is the case, in order to in order to become president in whatever the way he has, uh, really? I guess I don't need one after all. <laughs> well, behind every good man, there's a wonderful woman. Yeah. Well, that's the way he'd have to convert the Mormonism. He'd need more than one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way he'd have to convert the Mormonism. He'd need more than one. Now, gentlemen, there's a lot of things that makes no sense to me. First of all, and we're getting off on the president here, or I call him Hussein Obama, but he changed his name. And I think that's pretty much a fact that his name was Barry Sartoro. Sartoro. Barry Sartoro. Sartoro. That was his name. Uh huh. I, no one changes their name without a reason. There's got to be a reason for him to change his name. I would like to understand the reason, and I wish this had been asked years ago whenever he was running for president. And also, when he chose his name, or someone chose it for him, and I'd like to understand why that he picked the name Barack Hussein Obama. Where did this name originate from? Well, you know, it's like this. <clears throat> Mr. Andrews up there, last name is supposed to be Dillinger, but there was such a bad connotation going with Dillinger back when he was a young man. He changed his name to Andrews. He used to be Bob Dillinger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the he, had a, he, had a, he had an Uncle John that made some notable contributions along the way. Well, why would anyone who is being elected to such high office, why would there be such a controversy over a birth certificate? It would appear to me, let's say just to get my driver's license, my commercial license, they don't hum ha around. They tell you how it is. He has a uh, social security number from a state in which he's never lived. Well, but I don't even know if he's ever played, played golf in that state yet or not. Well, <laughs> the, the Social Security number, from my understanding, is his grandmother worked in the Social Security office, which this number came out of. And this number was previously used by a person who is deceased. Mm -hmm. So, is that, there's, I don't believe too much in coincidences. You don't believe now, in Barry recycling? Sartoro you don't believe in recycling? Was a yeah. citizen of Indonesia, went to school in Indonesia, applied to go to college in California as a foreign student. That is correct. That's why Memphis all his Island. records have been frozen. That uh, even though his records may have been sealed, he can unseal those himself. So we that need makes, a judge to unseal him. He can unseal him. Oh, he can pardon it. He can pardon himself. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even give you the lowest under cell phone. There's another thing. But we've got more <laughs> stuff. We got more stuff going on here that there's no answers for. We got the most criminal government at every level of government. City, county, state, and federal in this country right now than we've ever had well, in our history. The office of the president. There's too much money available. It, for that's the last guess. The, uh, the administrative division of the federal government has completely uh, dominated the legislative and the judicial branch, and uh, it's got. Uh, you know, the, the legislative branch is so afraid, afraid to oppose him on anything he does, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know uh, exactly what we need to do to right this ship of state and bring it back to where you have three equal uh, branches of government. And he will even chastise the Supreme Court if they rule uh, not in his favor. And he had actually pays no attention to what the ruling is. He just goes ahead as if the ruling never happened. And uh, so he is what I call a rogue president. Oh, yeah. Bob, we've got the same thing here on the local level. The Tennessee Constitution clearly states that we have three branches of government and they are to be maintained separately. Two. Except only in circumstances prescribed by the Constitution itself. Right. 
in the Constitution is not a prescribing methodology for one branch to take over another. Sure. And we have our executive branch, the last four years, has lorded over our, our legislative branch, sure. told them what to do, how to think, how to vote, ordered them around, and they've had eight or ten that always made sure everything passed the way they wanted it to pass. True, very true. And no matter what anybody said in resistance, whether it be Tom Hatmaker, uh, Beverly Hall, uh, the Walden guy, they would be belittled by the majority, and they would have the bait cut off. Well, if and they're lazy. any man who decided to discuss an issue in its entirety and thoroughness, they wrote a, wrote a rule to where they could uh, prescribe what could be said, how long it could be said, and, and in what context it could be stated within. Very, very the way true. it stands right now, Rule 13 states that anything you go to speak on in the county commission must be run by the county mayor first, and it must be, uh, he must, he will either say yes or no whether you can speak on that subject or not. That and is you, that is a violation of the state constitution itself. Well, in that that they have the legislative branch is actually requiring permission from the executive branch before somebody can speak before their own body. That's a violation of the state constitution. It is very much so. Well, we have another situation where if the election had gone different and uh, William Burr had been re-elected and David Young had retained his uh, position as assistant uh, mayor, uh, and if he had been elected uh, on the county commission, then you would have had a member of the executive department being a member of the county commission, which is a Definitely a no-no on the crossover. How long do you think it's going to take before the uh, Norris Dam Convention Center project rears its ugly head again now we've got a new mayor and county? You don't think that jive with William Barry? No, no I sir, don't. it does not. Once it's, I don't care what it is, once it goes before the state and they pass on it, it stays there forever. It never goes away. This can I be brought up I 20 years from now. to do it from the state once they give you permission. Once it's there, it's there permanent. It never goes away. Well, I think we'll just go ahead and build it on it. I do too. I do too. I mean, it's the only place where we can get on the lake in Campbell County. That's what they're esteeming. We have to drive to the council. Four, what is it, 42 counties to get to it, to that little one little spot of Campbell you, County? You cannot get there by road from Campbell County. Don't That's we, true. Don't we have That's a, why we ought to build them. Uh, we, 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 we don't need any further taking over. We don't want anybody from Campbell County down there to run it. We have somewhere around 800 miles of shoreline yep. on Norris Lake. Yep. And they want to, one place that's, the only place they build. that's the only place where you can stand on the porch of a convention center in Campbell County and pee in the Anderson County. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's true. Right, and all the roads, if you leave there, and they, want to, and they want to build it. I swear it's true. They want to build it right beside <laughs> three motels that have gone out of business and they're falling apart. I'll tell you what we're going to do, though. We're going to have another little exciting little right, little 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 that's yeah, we, we, might, we might, one of us might need his services here when we know. walk out the door, he can never do it.
does do that. That's well, right. And a person, person, personal <clears throat> recipient of their uh, services. I, they carried me to the hospital one time when I had uh, food poisoning, and they delivered me there safe and sound, and five days later I got out. They gave him a cookbook, too, so he wouldn't make that mistake again. <laughs> Our uh, <coughs> county ambulance service, the mayor's mother, fa had, fell and, and had to have an ambulance. They called 911, which goes directly to the county ambulance service. They did 45 minutes later, they never showed up. The mayor called... Instead of calling vital care, he calls the fire department. And they come up there with a fire with a vehicle from the fire department to haul his mother to the hospital. Now, folks, we do not need a county ambulance service when we have a private ambulance service which works perfectly and is responsible for staying in business on its own. They do not need tax dollars to make up for their discrepancies. All right. What about money? Hey, Ron, I'm Fred Sharp. Did you open your automated juice? <laughs> what did you, what did, you did you open your tomato did juice? Did you open your tomato juice? No, yeah, I did. I drank some V8 what I did. V8? Yeah, V8. Yeah, they have been opened several weeks in the refrigerator. Oh, I'm not talking to you, Bob. I'm talking to Ronald Fred Sharp. Fred Ronnie Sharp. He just sneaked out the door for something. He's taking a short break. Do what? I'm outside now. I'm here. Ronnie's taking a short break. Yeah, he had to go out to the first tree on the left. Well, well, Mary, are you out using a tree, too? No, I was listening to the radio, and I had Auburn and uh, whoever they were playing, uh, Arkansas, on, and I had to go outside because I couldn't go turn the radio down and talk to the others, too. Oh, yeah. So he can answer my question if he... Well, if Ronnie went out to use the second tree on the left, you might find him out there somewhere. Well, I'm too far away to find him. <laughs> so he can answer my question when he gets back. He's going to open his tomato juice, and he better not break my devilish jar. Oh, okay. We'll tell him what you're talking about. We'll tell him. We'll tell him. Appreciate you. Thank you for your for call, Mary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, if you go to the hotel, you know, I thought you were asking about my drinking of tomato juice. I had two bottles of B8 juice in the refrigerator. I didn't think either one of them had ever been opened. But somebody had opened one, and they had to put the top back on it. And about 30 days later, I come through there one night and wanted to drink a B8, and I just grabbed that and just chug it up. When they carried me out, I would turn the lights on, and think it had stuff growing in it. Oh, <laughs> You got a message while you were gone yeah. from uh, Mary, Mary Johnson. Yeah. Oh, that was a good mayor, Juice. She said, you don't you break her devilish jug or yeah. whatever jar. Yeah. Folks, speaking of jugs and Thank jars, you. did you know there's a place up near Somerset, Kentucky called Jug or Not? Called what? Jug or Not. Jug or Not. Oh, now, how it got its name? Oh, well, jug, jug or Not. Jug. 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 Yeah, I know. Juggernaut, and it got its name from back in the bootleg days when they uh, sold illegal moonshine down there in a holler and out from Somerset. You got a discount if you brought your own jug. So when you drove up, they'd always say Juggernaut, and the name stuck. <laughs> That's not that down right down close to where I lived for many many years. The home of Lux Pinto Beans, and uh, there's a little place called Why Not. That's the name of Why Not. I never, I never knew why, why they call Why Not Why Not. <laughs> well, we know what Juggernaut is called Juggernaut. But you go to discount. You brought your own judge. Albie Lux started Lux Pinto Beans. You ever heard of Do Hit Me Holler? Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> 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 never heard of that one. 
Do help me holler. Do help me holler. That, that's that's a local place. I, I like that. Do help me holler. That's the name of it. Is, sure that is. Off, is that up off Stinking Creek? No, it's up the valley here off of, uh, well, off a place called Knox Holler. Mm -hmm. Do help me holler. Do help me holler. Like it's out from Bethlehem. Yeah, Bethlehem. Uh, Bethlehem. Right over next to Victory Ridge. Yeah. Well, is he at all? How far is that from when? I don't know where we are. Fellas, I heard that. That's Harmon County. is almost closer. I heard a good one I thought the other day. And I, they, this is supposed to be true from what I'm hearing. <clears throat> There's a state up in the northeast, one of the New England states, and it may be Maine, a uh, school superintendent or not school superintendent, but a principal has got into some problem <clears throat> by asking the age of one of our, of some of our guests from south of the border. And uh, it turns out that she's described these people, they're saying that they're like 16, 17 year old, so they're entitled to be in school. But she says that these fellas, some of them are got more gray hair than she has and more wrinkles but she's not allowed to ask their age. And this American restriction, this restriction has come down from what I understand from the president, and I'm not gonna say an executive order, but some kind of a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, uh, where he just signs a paper, which it may, there may be something else, a decree or something other than an executive order, but it, anyhow. It's one of them executive orders that you don't know what's in it until it's passed. Okay, but anyhow, the thing, the gist They're of this thing that. is, that some of the people, well, first of all, it means that the United States government's took over our education system totally, just about it. Absolutely. But the problem is going to arise, The uh, some of the parents are concerned that they have underage children, girls especially, that are being put into class with people who, and that may be as much as 30, 35 year old. Now, how do we deal with this type of thing? Well, now let me tell you what happened when I come along. You know, we, we had a policy, they did not promote them. It make a difference how long they stayed in a class, they did not promote them unless they earned a promotion. I had people I went to school with in the fourth grade that got drafted. <laughs> well, uh, and where the hell did you get out of it, Bob? What, the traffic? And one of them was going to marry the teacher, but he was too old for him. Yeah. You know, my mother told me about somebody she went to school with at court and the teacher. Oh, <laughs> well, they were in grade school. We know years ago it used to be a friend's benefit for teachers to be able to date their students. Hey guys, discrimination is illegal in yeah. Tennessee. I'm just curious about the age that you're talking about of those um, guests. From south right. of the border? Yes. Right. Well, perhaps maybe there could be an adult school suggestion and maybe not focus so much on putting them in a uh, school like grades one through twelve, well, whatever. Well, I think adult education is much needed in America. But you can't stay in the country if you're that old. You got to be a you, child. You've you have uh, to be under The Dream Act. Yeah, uh, wow. unaccompanied. Maybe this is one of them unaccompanied children. Uh, if this is a fact, there is there need to be a major remedy for it. Uh, I see all sorts of possibilities and problems that can happen, and if you have large numbers, this it, there will be problems of some kind. And, and then, RL, who's going have, to be answerable for these problems? Well, and if you have corruption from the top, say from the president down, then you can't get any department of the government or any investigative agency that is uh, paid by the government to investigate this situation. I understand what you're saying. Let me switch over to another thing. The other night on, uh, I believe it was Jerry Chadwell's show, I made a suggestion there <clears throat> that, oh, well, they, the subject was, we're working on a continuing resolution right now instead of a budget in Campbell County. And they stated that we must have a budget 
by October the 1st, I believe. Was that our trustee Bullock who called in about that? It may have been, but here was the point that I made. Tom, I asked him a question about the accounts. How many of accounts, these bank accounts we've got, and it's up in the hundreds, according to Tom, of bank accounts. We got an account for this every time there's a project, every time this and that, there's an account. And my understanding is, is what they're doing here in order to find money, like on the, what we call the money hole park out here, there's so much money left in an account, like uh, East LaFollette School. Once the school is built, then there's like maybe $100,000 left in the account that they've over-appropriated, and it just lays there. Okay, if you expand this thing, there could be money laying out here in every project that's ever went on in this county for the last 15 or 20 years. Yeah, I'd be glad to clean up their mess well, for them. Now, now what, about, what about that account Tom talked about that's almost in every separate account down there called contributions? Well, now, well, the money see, old park has a, a, a contribution <laughs> account. It's called a contribution account. And didn't he say there was $10,000 in that one account? Well, in just that one account. Now, what's you contributions but in the money hole part? Okay, there could be four or five accounts there. Uh, but we need that audit okay, committee. Okay, but here's... We the, need... E.L. Morton needs to put this audit committee together. And they now, need to investigate no, every it, item it. in that... I thought budget. the audit committee was a fine right. idea, but I got a better idea. If the county commission would refuse to vote a budget, just say, no, we're not going to vote it. We don't have no budget. They say that the 